was the night before Halloween, and the city was alive with anticipation. My friend Brian and I were both NYU students, and we were always on the lookout for a thrilling adventure. We'd heard whispers about an old, abandoned townhouse in Brooklyn Heights. The stories ranged from it being haunted to being a hub for illegal activities in the past. We decided that this Halloween, we'd explore it. We met up at around 9pm, armed with flashlights and a sense of excitement. The townhouse was a relic from another era, sandwiched between modern buildings. Its windows were boarded up and the entrance was hidden behind overgrown shrubs. The eeriness of the place was palpable. As we approached the entrance, Brian hesitated. Are you sure about this man? He asked, his voice betraying a hint of fear. We've done scarier things, I replied, trying to sound braver than I felt. Pushing the creaky door open, we stepped into the dark, musty interior. Our flashlights revealed peeling wallpaper, broken furniture, and a thick layer of dust on everything. But what caught our attention were the footprints. They looked fresh, leading from the entrance to a locked cellar hatch in the middle of the living room. We exchanged glances. Someone's been in here recently, Jake whispered. I nodded, my curiosity peaked. Let's see where these lead. We followed the footprints which took us through the dilapidated living room into what looked like a study. Old books lay scattered everywhere, and a broken chandelier hung precariously from the ceiling. The footprints continued, leading us back to the cellar hatch. The hatch was old and rusty, with a heavy padlock securing it. We tried opening it, but it wouldn't budge. Looks like we're not getting in there, Brian remarked, sounding slightly relieved. But as we turned the leave, we heard a sound. A soft, muffled sound coming from below. It sounded like whispering. We froze, our hearts racing. The whispering grew louder, more urgent. And then, a sudden loud bang echoed from the cellar, causing the floorboards to vibrate. We didn't need any more snooping around. So, dropping our flashlights in fear, we bolted for the door. As we ran, I could swear I heard footsteps behind us, but I didn't dare look back. Bursting out into the cool night air, we didn't stop running until we safely reached the nearby cafe. Breathing heavily, Brian looked at me, with his face pale. What the hell was that? I shook my head, equally shaken. I don't know, but I don't want to find out. We decided to call it a night and headed back to our dorms. But the events of that night haunted us. Couldn't shake off the feeling that we'd stumble upon something sinister, or something evil. A, a few days later, as I was walking past the townhouse on my way to class, I noticed something odd. The entrance was sealed off with police tape, and there were several NYPD vehicles parked outside. Curious, I approached one of the officers. Excuse me, officer, what's going on here, I asked. He looked at me with his expression grave. We received an anonymous tip about suspicious activities in this townhouse. That's why we're investigating. I nodded, with my mind racing. I asked, did you find anything? The officer hesitated for a moment before replying. We found evidence of recent human activity in the cellar, but no one was there when we arrived. I felt a chill run down my spine. Thank you, officer, I mumbled, quickly walking away. Brian and I never spoke about that night again, but every time I passed that townhouse, I couldn't help but wonder what secrets it held, and who or what had been in that cellar that night we decided to explore. The townhouse was eventually demolished, and a new building block took its place. But the mystery of what happened that night remains unsolved, and every Halloween I'm reminded of the terror we felt, and the eerie whispers that still haunt my dream. I've always been drawn to the allure of nature, the tranquility, the untouched beauty, the sheer vastness of it all. So. When I got a week off from work, I decided to head to Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado. I had heard so much about its breathtaking trails and picturesque views. The morning I set out was perfect. Clear blue skies, a gentle breeze, and the sun casting a golden hue over the mountains. I chose a trail that was marked as moderate, 
thinking it would be a good balance between challenge and enjoyment. About an hour into my hike, I was completely immersed in the beauty around me. The chirping of the birds, the rustling of the leaves, and the distant sound of flowing water. It was therapeutic. As I continued on the trail, I noticed a man up ahead. He seemed to be in his late forties, wearing a worn out hat and carrying a tattered backpack. As I approached, he turned his face to me, his eyes hidden behind a pair of dark sunglasses. Beautiful day for a hike, isn't it? He said, his voice gravelly. I nodded, trying to keep the conversation short. Sure is. He pointed to a narrow path that veered off the main trail. You know, there's a hidden waterfall down that way. Not many people know about it. It's a sight to behold. I hesitated. The path he pointed to looked less traveled, the entrance almost obscured by overgrown shrubs. I think I'll stick to the main trail, I replied, trying to sound polite. The man's demeanor changed. His friendly facade faded, replaced by a more insistent tone. You're missing out. It's just a short detour. Come on, I'll show you. Now this was a major red flag. I had read enough stories and seen enough news reports to know that this situation was dangerous. Thanks for the offer, but I really need to get going, I said, quickening my pace. But the man wasn't ready to give up. He started following me, his steps echoing mine. You should really see that waterfall. It's a once in a lifetime view. I didn't respond, focusing on putting as much distance between us as possible. Every time I glanced back, he was still there, maintaining the same distance, his gaze fixed on me. My heart raced as I thought of my options. I could try to outrun him, but I didn't know the terrain well enough. Or I could confront him, but that could escalate things and I didn't want that. As these thoughts raced through my mind, I remembered a survival tip I'd read about. If you ever feel threatened by a person, Make as much as noise as possible to attract any attention. Taking a deep breath, I started shouting, Is anyone there? I need help. Over and over again. To my relief, a group of hikers appeared from around a bend in the trail. Seeing them, the man immediately turned around and disappeared down the path he had pointed out earlier. The group rushed over, concern evident on their faces. I quickly explained the situation, with my voice shaking. They offered to escort me back to the trailhead, an offer which I gratefully accepted. As we walked, one of the hikers, a local, mentioned that there had been reports of a man trying to lure hikers down secluded paths. Some had gone missing, only to be found days later, with their belongings scattered around the park. The realization hit me like a ton of bricks. I had come dangerously close to becoming one of those statistics. When we reached the parking lot, I thanked the group profusely for their help. Their kindness was stark contrast to the sinister intentions of the man I had encountered. As I drove away, the majestic beauty of the Rocky Mountains in my rearview mirror, I made a silent promise to myself to never hike alone ever again. The experience served as a chilling reminder that while nature can be breathtakingly beautiful, it can also hide dangers that lurk in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to strike. It was the week leading up to Halloween, and the excitement in our small town was intense. Every year, a local Halloween fair was set up, complete with games, food stalls, and the main attraction, a haunted house. This year, my high school friends and I decided to check it out. This year, my friends and I, all high school seniors, decided to make the most of our last Halloween together before college. The group consisted of me, Alex, Sarah, and Ben. We had been inseparable since childhood, and the thought of our last Halloween together made the night even more special. The fair was alive with the sounds of laughter, screams, and the distant hum of carnival rides. After trying out a few rides and indulging in some canning apples, we decided it was time to face the haunted house. The house stood tall and foreboding, its gothic architecture making it look eerily authentic. We decided to split up inside to make it more thrilling. 
Sarah and Ben took the left corridor, while Alex and I ventured to the right. The house was a maze of dark corridors, fog machines, and actors dressed in terrifying costumes. Just when I thought I'd seen it all, an actor dressed as a fair employee approached me. Hey, he whispered, looking around nervously. Your friends have already exited. They told me to fetch you. Confused, I replied. We just entered. How could they have exited so quickly? The man's eyes darted around. They took a shortcut. Come with me, I'll show you the way out. Something felt off. The man's insistence, combined with the fact that the haunted house didn't have any shortcuts, made me wary. As I hesitated, the man's grip on me tightened, trying to pull me towards a dimly lit exit sign. My heart raced as I remembered the jiu-jitsu techniques I'd learned over the summer. Without giving it a second thought, I used a swift move to break free from his grip, and using another technique, managed to pin him to the ground. I quickly made my way back to the main corridor, where I found Alex, Sarah and Ben. They were equally confused having not sent anyone to fetch me. We quickly realized the danger I'd narrowly escaped and decided to alert the fair security. The security team found the man I'd subdued, attempting to flee towards the parking lot. In his haste, he dropped a walkie-talkie. Through it, we could hear another voice frantically asking, Did you get the kid? The police were called, and a search of the fairgrounds led to the discovery of another man waiting in a van equipped with ropes, chloroform, and other items. Both men were arrested, and it was later revealed that they had been involved in several kidnappings in neighboring towns. This incident cast a dark shadow over what was supposed to be a fun-filled night. The fair was temporarily shut down, and when it reopened, security measures were significantly enhanced. Our close-knit group became even more tighter after that night. We were hailed as local heroes, and my jiu-jitsu skills became the talk of the school. But more than just the fame, we were grateful for the bond we shared and the dangers we'd overcome together. That Halloween night taught us the importance of trust, intuition, and the strength that comes from unity. It was a chilling reminder that real monsters often hide behind the most unsuspecting masks, and it could be anyone around you.